Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. Before we get into the stories, I really need all of you to pay close attention to what I'm about to say. This is a compilation. Yes, it's a compilation. So before you go crazy in the comments section, complaining about it being a compilation, I'm letting you all know now, it's a compilation. I know a lot of people hate these, but I want you to look on screen at this photo. This is a compilation that I did randomly, like a month or two ago, because I just didn't have time to record for a video. Look at how many views that compilation got. 300,000. I know a lot of people hate compilations, but the truth is, they just do really well on the channel. And every now and then, I'm gonna do one. I just felt like I needed to say that before we get into the video, because I just know there's gonna be some comments complaining. All that being said though, if you have your own personal scary story, consider sending that my way at southerncannibal.com. All that being said, if you happen to like compilations, well, let's go ahead and get into the stories. I'm sorry if this is really long, but it has so many parts, and I want to make sure that it all makes sense. Also, please don't judge me. I honestly really hate the person that I was, and I still hate myself for being such a garbage human being. Here's my story. My husband and I got together right before we started high school, and after we graduated in 2012, we moved in together. Things were going great. We had our first child in 2015, and I started a new job at a hotel. I'd worked at hotels before, so when a spot opened up for an assistant manager, I jumped on it, and that was when my life began to deteriorate. I started hanging out with my boss and co-workers outside of work, and they were heavy drinkers, and they did some drugs as well. So I started drinking to fit in, I guess, and unfortunately, I got addicted to alcohol. I would leave my partner and son at home to go out and party until a few hours before I had to go to work. After a few months of this, I started having an affair with one of my co-workers. I'm not at all proud of the person I was at the time, but I finally came clean about what I was doing and it shattered my partner's heart. He decided he couldn't be with me and he moved out. This was when things got even worse. Since my partner was gone and I single-handedly ruined my family, I started drinking even more, to the point that I was never sober. I started dating the coworker that I had an affair with, and not only did they mentally abuse me, but things got constantly physical when he was wasted. I'm gonna provide a trigger warning right now for sexual assault. Here's your chance to click off the video. I was raped, thrown into walls, slapped, choked, and had wine glasses thrown at me. I took it all because I figured I deserved it for what I did to my ex and son. One day my ex called me and he said he wanted to take things slow and possibly get back together one day. So I stopped drinking and I cut off my coworker, only for him to send nude photos of me that were taken without my consent to my ex. He also busted out all of the windows on my car and carved his initials onto my trunk and then proceeded to bust all of the windows out of my house except for my son's room in retaliation so I guess thanks for at least that. I tried calling the cops, but I was told even though his damn initials were right on my car, there was no proof since I didn't see him, and they couldn't do anything. I ended up quitting my job because I knew as long as I worked there, my coworker would keep trying to drag me down. I blocked all of his contact info and anyone who worked with us so that no one could tell him anything about me. Since I needed a job ASAP, I went back to one of the first jobs I ever had at Domino's as a delivery driver. My now ex coworker had started stalking me and calling the store to harass me. I don't even know how he figured out I worked there, except maybe seeing my still beat up car outside. Now, my phone tells me whenever a blocked number is calling me, and I noticed he had called me about 50 times in a two hour period. Oh great, I thought. I was working the closing shift, so I figured I would just ignore him and hope he would just give up by the time I got off. I almost forgot all about it until I got back from making a delivery and my coworker asked me to take over the oven because he was boxing up his delivery order and he needed to go. 
As I was clocking myself into the system as back from delivery, I noticed the address he was about to make a delivery at. It was my address. I asked him if that was the address on the ticket, and he said yes. I then asked for the phone number, and he then read off my stalker's number. I then started to hyperventilate and cry because my ex-mother-in-law was at my house babysitting my son, and I was really terrified for them, especially knowing that my stalker kept a gun in his car. I told my co-worker the story, and he said he would go by and check on them for me. I wasn't going to wait, so I then called my ex-mother-in-law, and she said everything was fine and that she hadn't noticed anything. And when my co-worker got back, he corroborated what she told me. When I finally got off, I checked around my house using a flashlight, and I found a black glove by my mailbox and footprints by the side gate that looked like a pair of boots my stalker wore. I don't know what would have happened to me if I would have been the one to go to my house, but I'm positive it would have been very bad. I moved shortly after that, got a new car, and my high school sweetheart wanted to give me another chance and moved back in with me. We're still going strong and we've had two more babies and I gave up drinking. I also haven't heard from my stalker since. So I would say life is going amazingly now. The story is about my mom's recent ex-husband. It happened recently, and it happened over the span of a couple of years. My mom still doesn't want to really admit how bad the situation really was, but she's probably still in a little bit of denial from it. She met this guy that I'll call Joe when I was five years old. We had just moved to Indiana, and she was still with my dad, but they had split up shortly after, and then her and Joe started dating. We moved to Florida to live with my grandparents for a few years, but they still kept talking. Fast forward a few years, and I'm now around 14. I also have a sister, and she's six years younger than me. She was also heavily affected by what happened, as she had to witness everything firsthand. Anyways, fast forward a few years, and Joe and my mom started seriously dating again, and they wanted to get married. I always got really bad vibes from him, and I tried telling my mom, but she didn't listen. Joe was a smoker, and my mom hated it. He also used to have a drinking problem, but my mom didn't really know just how bad it was until after they got married. I went to go live with my older sister for a few months, for reasons that I don't want to disclose, but my mom and Joe got married during those few months. When I went back to living with my mom, Joe was now living with us. We had a small two-bedroom house, and me and my sister had to share a room, but my sister would still sleep in my mom's room because she was scared of the dark, so she was sleeping in the same room as Joe, too. Now, I'm going to go ahead and explain all the messy shit that happened. Joe started drinking again. He would be drunk all the time, and he would steal my mom's money for beer. My mom tried to send him to rehab a couple times, but it didn't work. When Joe finally got a job again after being fired from his last job, he would hide money and he wouldn't help my mom with the bills. They were married now, so I mean, it only made sense that they would both pay the bills and stuff. My mom and him would constantly fight about money, him drinking, him sneaking off to buy beer, him stealing, etc. It was pretty traumatic to hear them fight almost every night, and I felt really bad for my sister having to hear it too. Joe would hide his car keys to hide stuff in his car, and my mom once found weed in there. Joe once even stole money from my little sister for whatever he needed. He would also get the only most expensive gas for his car, so he needed hundreds of dollars every month from my mom for that. When he got fired from his first job, he had just sold his gun. And it's a good thing he did because he went to his boss, and my mom believes that he would have tried to kill her if he still had his gun. Anyways... My mom kicked him out several times, but always brought him back, even though me and my sister always begged her not to. At one point, he bribed us with Apple watches, which didn't really make us hate him any less, by the way. And at one point, he was drunk in bed, saying he was going to kill himself, and my mom told me to call 911. My sister was in the room while everything happened. Joe had even cheated on my mom during one of the times she kicked him out. My mom finally kicked him out for good after a couple of years, and he went back to the woman he cheated with. That's when the phone calls, emails, texts, and even the threats all began. They would constantly call us and text us, blaming my mom for everything that happened and saying really terrible things about her and making up lies. He was always drunk whenever he would call. 
One time his new girlfriend even threatened to cut my mom's throat. That was the final straw, and when we decided to call the cops, they couldn't really do anything about it though. The calls and the texts wouldn't stop. My mom kept getting emails up until a few months ago. I'm 17 years old now, and me and my sister are still really traumatized. It felt like my mom chose him over us, and I'm still really hurt over it. But I really just hope to never see Joe again. For some background, I'm a bisexual female, and this happened about five years ago when I was in my early 20s, and I had just moved to a new city. I had made some friends pretty quickly, because I had gotten a job at a very popular sports bar with an all-female staff. Maybe after a few months of working there, I had gotten introduced to my friend's girlfriend. Let's call my friend Ashley and her girlfriend Michelle for this story. Pretty much immediately, I was attracted to Michelle, but since she was dating my friend, I put that in the back of my mind. After a while, I had noticed Ashley and Michelle were having some problems. Ashley started showing up late for all of her shifts and she looked really tired or sad whenever she was there. I of course asked her if everything was okay and she gave me a vague answer that Michelle was just crazy and she's tired of it. Like the good friend I am, I told her she could stay at my house for a few days if she needed to. And to my surprise, she actually agreed and stayed over that night. While she was over, she told me more in detail about the things Michelle was doing. Basically, she didn't trust Ashley, and she always thought that she was cheating, so it would always lead to a huge fight. I guess that wasn't enough for her to really be done, though, because the very next night, she had asked me to go with her to a bar to meet up with Michelle so that they could talk things out. I'm not a judgmental person at all, so I was nice to Michelle, and I let them deal with their problems. By the end of the night, Everyone seemed happy, and they left together. A few weeks later, Ashley's parents show up at my house, which obviously confused me because I never met them, but I asked what they needed. Apparently, Ashley had given them my address saying she lived with me instead of Michelle because her parents didn't like the two of them being together. I told them she didn't live with me, but that I could show them where she's at, as they were clearly very worried. We pulled up to Michelle's house, where I assume Ashley was staying at, and a huge mess unfolded. Michelle wouldn't open the door, and you could hear Ashley trying to calm her down on the other side, while the mom was screaming for her to open it, and the dad was on the phone with the police. Eventually, the police show up, got them to open up, and Ashley leaves with her parents back to where they live in another state. From what I gathered later, Michelle and Ashley were in a very abusive relationship, and her parents were really worried for her safety. It didn't take too long for me to put it behind me, seeing as it wasn't really my business. Well, a few months later, I was at the gym when I ran into Michelle. She was a personal trainer, and she ended up coming up to me, saying hi to me. I greeted her back, and she replied immediately with, Oh, so we're cool? I thought you acted like you didn't see me earlier, and I thought we were going to have a problem. Immediately, this should have been a red flag for me. But she was really so gorgeous and smiled when she said it, so I just kind of laughed her comment off and said that I didn't really see her before. After that, I would see her pretty much every time that I went to the gym, and I actually looked forward to seeing her. Eventually, she asked me out, and I said yes. I know you guys are probably thinking, what a shitty friend, and I agree, but I hadn't even talked to Ashley in a really long time since she moved away. For our first date, we went to a club. Everything was pretty normal, except when a guy complimented me to her, saying she was lucky to be here with me. Instead of agreeing or dismissing him, she got in his face, saying how disrespectful he was. It caught me totally off guard, but we continued on with our night, and I actually went home with her. We slept together, and it was amazing. Embarrassingly, right afterwards, I had leaned over and I threw up all over her floor. But she was nice enough to clean it up and she didn't even make me feel bad about it at all. We eventually started dating and the first month was really great. You know how gay people move too fast? Well, we were no exception. I was pretty much over every night. We practically lived together. Very soon though, Michelle started showing her true colors. She would show up at my job and always get mad if I talked to other guys. Mind you, I'm a server and it's literally my job. 
Whenever I would come home, she would always accuse me of being with a guy or not talk to me at all. In the beginning, I would argue back, but eventually, I just started to feel like I was really in the wrong. That's what abusers do. They make you feel like you're a shit person and that you really deserve everything they do to you and you should be so happy that they chose to be with a screw up like you. Eventually, I had no friends left. It just wasn't worth the fight to try and hang out with them. They of course saw all this and they tried to get me to see it for what it was. But of course, I didn't listen. My mom and I are extremely close to this day and during that time, I barely even talked to her. Michelle wanted to make sure she was the only one I could turn to. Once she isolated me is when all of the physical abuse then started. I blocked out a lot of it due to trauma, but a few instances that stick out are her dragging me out of the house by my hair in front of all the neighbors, hitting me at work for taking the car charger with me, burning me with blunts and cigarettes, and locking me in rooms for days at a time when she thought I was getting ready to leave her. Honestly, I can't even tell you how long I stayed with her. It's really all a blur now, but probably a little over a year. In that time, I never fought back. I truly thought that I was in the wrong and deserved what she did to me, even though I never once cheated. The Stockholm Syndrome was real. One day I was at my own place and she came over in the middle of the night and stole my cat and tried but failed to set my kitchen on fire. I didn't hear her come in and so I woke up to a bunch of messages and videos of her with my cat threatening to kill him. He was my baby and I was such a mess, trying my best to convince her not to hurt him. She said I was playing games because I didn't wake up when she came in and that I must have had a guy over earlier because logic, right? Anyways, my mom is actually the hero of the story and went over to her house to get my baby back. He was unharmed and I still have him to this day. That was my breaking point. I guess I had to see something I love almost get hurt by this psychotic bitch to finally have enough. I ended things and she did her normal switch up, crying telling me how much she loved me and when she knew I wasn't letting up, she got violent. She showed up to my place many times, but I never let her in. Eventually, she would set stuff on fire in front of my door in hopes that I'd open it. I don't know why I never called the police. I was so nervous to leave my place, thinking she would be waiting. She even tried to run me over a few times, and I eventually lost my job and apartment due to her constantly causing problems at both places. I was so depressed and broke that I developed a really bad drinking problem to cope, and eventually... I had to move back in with my mom. My saint of a mom helped me through everything, and eventually, Michelle finally dropped from my life. She was afraid of my mom, so I think that that played a really big factor. She knew my mom would kick her ass on sight if she ever saw her again. It took me a few years to be myself again. I had nightmares for months and was angry at the world. I was eventually diagnosed with an anxiety disorder and depression and I closed myself off to the world, and only recently have I been trying to heal in a healthy way and acknowledge my trauma. I'm with an amazing man now that loves me so genuinely that I still have a hard time accepting I deserve it. He reminds me every single day that I do, and I truly believe he saved me. I'm healing, and life is really good, but I did come across her TikTok on social media recently. I saw she's with someone new, and I thought about warning the girl but decided against it. After all, I didn't listen, and I saw firsthand how she treated Ashley before me. I think she's in a new city now, far away from me, which makes me incredibly happy. I hope I never see her again, and if I do, I'm not really sure I wouldn't catch a charge. Side note, her mom knew how she was and still defended her. She wouldn't let me in when I got locked out, even if I just wanted my phone to call a lift. She turned her head, thinking her daughter was perfect, even though Michelle treated her like crap too. I honestly think she was afraid of her own daughter, but I guess that's a whole different story. Okay, so the story might not be as scary as the others here, but I know I was terrified in the moment. In the fall of 2019, my toxic on-again, off-again boyfriend, who I'll call Joe, had broken up with me. I was living in a townhouse with my roommate who I'll call Molly and I was working the night shift at my job. So on a typical Saturday morning, I arrived home from work at around 1.30 a.m. and as I'm walking to my door, 
I notice a man sitting on a planter box in between my unit and my neighbor's unit. He had his hood up, blocking his face. I didn't want to overreact, so in my head I just told myself maybe he was smoking a cigarette or something. But I did get out my pocket knife, just in case. I walked up to my door, then unlocked it, and then quickly shut it and locked it behind me, with no problems. Once I got in my apartment, I noticed a really horrid smell coming from the trash can, and I decided the trash needed to be taken out before I could eat anything. I waited about 30 minutes or so, and then looked out my window and peephole, and I couldn't see the man anymore, so I got up the courage to take out the trash. When I walked by the planter box, of course, he was still there. I started to panic a little at this point, but I still had to take the trash to the can, and came back and locked the door again. I went to go grab a frozen pizza from my freezer, and when I closed the freezer door, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a head peeking at me through the window at the top of the door, and then they quickly dug down, hoping I hadn't seen them. This was when my heart dropped into my stomach. I still wasn't quite sure if I needed to call the cops or not, so I went upstairs to my room to see if I could see down and if he was still lurking out there, but I couldn't see. I then turned towards my bed and my heart was beating so hard that I almost fainted. My bed was perfectly made, and I knew that I had not left it that way. I then went into Molly's room, and I had asked her if she had been in my room, and she told me no. I then started to cry. I then began to think about how I had seen a couple of things that were really out of place in the kitchen. My roommate never washed the dishes by hand, and so I would always wash them all whenever I came home, but today, they had been washed. I got my pocket knife back out of my pocket, dialed 911, and locked my phone so it would be ready to call, and I then went downstairs and started slowly walking to the door. Suddenly the motion sensing porch light came on, and through the curtains in the living room window, I saw none other than Joe's face. I went to the door, flung it open, and there he stood. I threw my knife down and dropped to my knees, hyperventilating. By now my roommate and her friend had came downstairs and she was arguing with him. I'm listening to what he's saying and I can't believe my ears. He had planned on catching me as I was coming home from work, but he got there early. He used our spare key and he let himself in. He said that he wanted to do the things that I do after I get home from work so I wouldn't come home with chores to do. He washed all of the dishes, sat clothes in my bathroom for my shower, made my bed, but the last thing, which was the most disturbing, he went in my underwear drawer, grabbed his favorite pair of my panties, and then went back outside and waited for me to get home. Now in hindsight, he was trying to be romantic, according to him, but in that moment, it was probably the scariest feeling that I'd ever felt. This happened about three years ago. I had been dating this girl for about three months. We had dated previously, but I decided I wasn't ready for a commitment. Nearly two and a half years later, we decided to give it another go again, and we became serious rather quickly. The relationship was going well, but I always felt like there were some things about her past that she wasn't completely honest with me about. Just a bit of backstory. This woman who I'll call Jane was married previously, and had a daughter from this marriage. I always noticed that when she would tell me about her previous marriage, that she would always talk about her ex in a way that as if she still had deep-rooted feelings for him, that were still lingering as if she was never actually over him. Whenever I would confront her about it and how weird it was, she would just always reply back with, Well, he's my daughter's father. I'm only being nice to him so that my daughter can see her parents getting along. I began to be really annoyed at how much she would carry on about this guy, but I really liked her, so I was willing to stick around. I know. Stupid. I guess because I'm a hopeless romantic, I believed in giving this woman the benefit of the doubt, just hoping one day she'd stop talking about him. To my dismay, it didn't stop, and I finally told her, Listen, if we're going to have a relationship, you're going to have to stop giving this man so much access to your life. I know you guys have a daughter, but this guy's just around way too much for you two to simply be exes. Eventually, she began to consider the situation and she eventually stopped mentioning him so much because of how uncomfortable it was making me. One night, we had set a home date at her house because she lived in a different state. Now, the state that she lived in bordered my state, 
so it was actually about an hour and a half away from where I lived. I told her that I wanted to marry her and that I'd really like to get to know her daughter on a more personal level because I was so nervous with her mother, because I was so serious with her mother. Now Jane's daughter was about 10 at the time. We'll call her Madison. Madison was very fond of me and she always called me Mr. She really wanted her mom to marry me. Oftentimes Jane and I would FaceTime each other and Madison would come on the FaceTime with her and say hi. She really was such a sweet little girl. Anyways, back to what happened that night. We were hitting it off really well, and the night was going well. We were watching television and playing games and just really having a good time. She had asked me some questions about myself, and I did so to her as well. The one unusual thing that I noticed was that her dad, my girlfriend's ex, kept FaceTiming her all night long. Now at first, it wasn't too alarming. It's not uncommon for a dad who doesn't live in the home with his child to FaceTime. The problem with this night was that it happened repeatedly, every five to ten minutes. I began to wonder if he was calling to get a glimpse of what was going on, as if he were being nosy and eavesdropping on our conversations. Finally, after a night of fun, I kissed my girlfriend goodnight and began to get on the road since I had about an hour and a half drive back home. It was late, around 11 at night. I got on the road and turned my GPS on. I turned out of the apartment complex that she lived in and then turned left onto a dark road. Then I made another right onto a main road. Now remember, it's nearly midnight in this really small town and there weren't a lot of cars on the road. Suddenly a car pulls up beside me and I notice someone in my peripheral vision trying to get my attention. I turn around and I see a really large man with a trench coat on. He seemed really angry and agitated. He kept trying to get my attention. I finally turned around because I've encountered this before. Sometimes someone is trying to tell you that maybe you have a flat tire or something's hanging out of your car. Finally I say, what's up? Can I help you sir? The guy immediately begins screaming at me. Hey, I need to talk to you right now. I then respond back by saying, hey bro, I don't know you. I have no problems with you. I then roll up my window and keep driving. He flags me down again and he's progressively getting angrier and angrier. My adrenaline began rushing and my heart was pounding. This guy was right up beside me with his head out the fucking window now saying, Hey asshole, I need to talk to you right now. I began panicking because I didn't have my gun on me. The guy could have had anything in his car. There weren't that many cars on the road and it was really dark and in the middle of the night. I finally agreed to meet him at the gas station that was right down the road. All the while, I had no actual intentions of meeting up. I just agreed to throw him off. He then gets in front of me and then does a U-turn, and I agree to follow behind him, but instead I hit the gas and get off on the interstate. After getting down the road a few miles, I call my girl and I ask her if her ex was out and in the area. I had seen pictures of him before, and it finally registered that this asshole was the one who pulled up beside me, shouting and screaming at me. She begins by saying that as soon as I pulled off, he came by the house and then began berating her about letting a stranger meet his daughter. I later found out that he was sitting in the parking lot the entire night, lurking in the dark while he was FaceTiming his daughter. He had been watching us all night long. My heart began pounding. I was horrified. When I confronted her all about this on my way home, she was very condescending and very dismissive of his behavior. Then saying, Oh, he can just be like that sometimes, but I promise he wasn't going to do anything to you. He just wanted to talk. I was so furious at her because she not only didn't take it seriously, but this whole situation could have cost me my life. Who the hell knows what that weirdo psychopath would have done to me? I may never know, and I don't care to. I have two teenage children who could have lost their dad that night because of some psycho jealous ex. Needless to say, I dumped her ass two days later in person. To Jane and her crazy ex. I hope you two stay away from me and never bother me again. When I was around the age of 13, I had met someone who claimed to be 16 on Facebook. For the sake of anonymity, we'll call him Sam. Sam had put me into a group chat with a bunch of people 
who I'd later become friends with. I had a roleplay account on Facebook, so my account was known among the anime community. I'd gotten really comfortable around these people. A couple of years pass, and around this time I was 15, and he was apparently 18, and he had claimed to have a sister who he added to the group chat. The sister was in the military, and she lived just a state over. For the story's sake, we'll call her Venus. Sam introduced Venus to us, telling us all these little facts about her. But the strangest thing is they would never be online at the same time. This went on for multiple years during that time. I had eventually gotten into a relationship with Venus, and we were together for a few years. She would disappear every so often and wouldn't really talk, and she'd get really mad about certain things. For example, when I was younger, I was drinking with friends and one of my gay best friends was there, and I had touched his leg hair with my hand and called him Bigfoot, and we had all just laughed about it. But Venus got really mad at me, and we were on a video call at the time, and she hung up on me. What she said next was absolutely insane. She said what I did was cheating, and that she was going to kill her own brother, Sam, which, as you can imagine, shocked the hell out of me. She later on sent photos of blood to the group chat, claiming it was Sam's blood, and that she killed her own brother. Totally freaked out, an hour had passed, and my friend and I got really close to calling the cops, but we were terrified teenagers, so we didn't call right away. Sam had later on messaged us in the group chat, and he said he was fine and very much alive, but that she did attack him. At this point, she was offline pretty much all the time now, and to a lot of you, I'm sure this won't come as a surprise, but to me and everyone else in the group chat, we didn't really expect what was coming. She went offline for a while again, and we eventually just broke up. Well, a few years after that, I got into a relationship with her brother Sam, she didn't really have an online presence anymore at this point. It was like she just ceased to exist. About a year into my relationship with Sam, I had found a Facebook page that had her exact pictures on it. But it wasn't under the name she went by. It was under some random girl's name. And when I confronted Sam about it, I asked if she had an extra account. And he asked me in a panic how I found it. He freaked out and in less than a minute, I was blocked from the account and Sam just asked me to pretend like it didn't exist. Of course, I thought this was weird as hell, but I didn't really give it a second thought at the time. Again, really stupid teenager stuff, but something didn't sit right with me. Sam and I had started planning to meet each other in the coming months, but things started to take a really bizarre turn in the relationship. He started saying a lot of NSFW things to me that just really made me uncomfortable. I had started to even get scared of him, well, I eventually get cold feet, and I call off meeting up with him, and I even break off the whole relationship. I don't know how to explain it, but something just didn't feel right anymore. He hasn't contacted me since, but with everything running together, and with me talking with our old friends, I think we've all put together the pieces that Sam and Venus were the same people. There was never a sister. It was only him. He made up this entire life of this other human being. He pretended like he was his sister killing him, as well as faking cancer and faking military careers just to be in a relationship with me. I never really confronted him about it because I just never really had the guts to, but my childhood was consumed by someone that led me on for years, who was apparently in their 20s and crazy enough to make up different lives. I don't even know if the person I saw in the pictures was actually him or not, and I guess now I never will. To Sam, Wherever you are out there, you're really fucking sick in the head. My name is Ember, and I recently just turned 30. I live outside of a town that you can say is known for having very disgusting water, if that helps put that together. The story I'm about to tell you is pretty damn terrifying, and sadly, very true. I met my now ex seven years ago. Let's call him William for privacy reasons. We had actually talked on a dating website first. And ironically, we had ran into each other in a local bar months later. He walked up to me and said, Hey, you look so familiar. Didn't we talk online before? And those words turned us into talking all night long. 
and then us meeting up later that week for him to cook some dinner at his house for me. He seemed pretty normal. He lived alone, and he had a pretty good job working as an electrician. He was also pretty easy on the eyes, but he was 10 years older than me, which didn't really bother me, because I had always dated older than my age anyways. He always had kind of a sadness in his eyes, which not long after seeing each other, I found out it was due to his children living in another state with his grandmother. You see, his ex-wife had died from unknown causes while they were going through a divorce, but that'll come into play a little later on in the story. The fact that he didn't have custody was certainly a red flag, as I had a three-year-old daughter, but the reasons he explained to me had made a lot of sense to me at the time. After a while of being together, his jealousy definitely started to show. He would accuse me of cheating on him anytime I wouldn't answer my phone right away, or if I wanted to do anything else with friends or family. One night he started to fight when I had to be up for work really early, just yelling at me to wake up. I had told him to leave me alone at least 10 times until I just couldn't take it anymore and lifted the pillow out from under me and chucked it at him. He instantly threatened to call the police on me and I had enough, so I locked myself in the room with my daughter to get some sleep. He then took the locked doorknob off the door and said I better speak with him or he's going to call the police on me. I honestly had enough at this point because now he was doing this in front of my daughter. I called my mom to come get us because I knew he would actually let me leave if she showed up. My mom had finally got there, and when she did, the second that my daughter got on the porch, he grabbed my arm as I was walking out and pulled me back inside, then shutting the door and leaving my mother and daughter outside. He was pleading to me, please don't go anywhere, and after a while of my mother banging on the door and threatening to call the police, he finally let me go. After us getting back to my mom's, I knew I was done with that asshole. The very next day, I got my dad, sister, brother, and cousins to help me get my things out and to put it into a storage unit. Even in front of my dad, which my dad is very scary and intimidating, he just kept trying to plead with me not to leave until my dad finally said to him, You don't speak to her. You don't even look at her. After leaving him, he would text me every single day, begging me to talk to him. Some of them would be very nice, like, No matter what happens, I'll always love you, Ember. Then it would be, you're such a fucking slut. You're probably with some dude right now. Then another text would come through about how amazing I am in bed and no one in the world could ever make him feel the way I do. Then threatening if I didn't talk to him, he was going to post all the pictures I had sent him online for everyone to see. Fast forward a few days later and he had sent my family members lots of lies about me, telling them I was a drug addict and doing all these other crazy things. This is when I finally had enough and I would called the police to report harassment. The cop that showed up was actually my mother's friend's ex-husband, so I had known him personally. He called my ex on the phone, and the conversation went as followed. Hey, is this William? Yeah, who the fuck is this? This is an officer, and you really need to leave Amber the fuck alone. This is a prank call. You're not a real officer. Suck my dick, bitch. And then hung up on him. The officer told me to get into his cruiser and show him where he lives, which was right down the road. When we pulled up, he was getting into his car to leave. On the way there, the cop had noticed he had a warrant for some unpaid tickets. He immediately stepped out of the car and then arrested him right there on the hood of his car. I got into the front seat of the cruiser, and the whole time driving back to my house, he was saying, Ember, I still love you, baby. I love you so much. Why are you doing this? Before the cop could tell him to shut up. When I finally got dropped back off in my house, the cop stepped out of the car and he told me to stay away from him, that he's the kind of man who'll kill me one day, and he has a prior PPO against him from another female. That definitely freaked me out, but the second he got out of jail, he was immediately texting me and telling me he forgives me and how much he loves me more than anything. Fast forward a couple years later, but in between these couple of years, I had gotten married and in between them, he would still find me on any platform and he would send me random messages letting me know he still loves me and always will. Well, eventually my ex-husband and I went through a divorce, and let's just say I went wild and totally out of my mind at this point. So, I actually entertained my ex like a complete moron, and I actually went on some dates with him and stayed the night with him pretty regularly. I was feeling pretty insecure with myself due to my divorce, but my thought process was pretty ignorant, and my family was extremely angry with me. 
Everything was going pretty great at first though, until again it wasn't. He would again do crazy things, like accuse me of sleeping with my own family members and lie to my friends to get them to be mad at me, like telling them that I secretly hate them and just really outlandish things. He had actually sent flowers to my work, my mom's, my house, my sister's house, my aunt's house, and my house all in one day. Thousands of dollars worth of flowers just to get me to talk to him after I told him I couldn't take it anymore. I had agreed to go to his house and talk, which was the biggest mistake of my life. When I got there, he was sitting on his bed, and I sat down next to him. He was being super sweet at first, and he thanked me for coming over but then his facial expressions turned sinister. He told me that he knows I've been fucking someone else, and I assured him I wasn't, and I had no interest in anyone at this point. He then stood up and started screaming at me. Yes, you did. I know you fucked someone, and you better admit it right now. I kept telling him I didn't, and that I wasn't going to admit to something I didn't do. And then he said to me, You better admit it right fucking now, or I'll squeeze the fucking life out of you. I was hesitant, but I just screamed. Okay, fine. I guess I did it then. Ethan jumped on top of me and started squeezing my face and shaking my head. You're a fucking whore. How could you do this to me? You're just like Laura, my whore ex-wife. As it turns out, Laura was his ex-wife that had passed away by unknown reasons. Her death was ruled inconclusive. I started punching his head and he eventually jolted up off the bed and went and stood in the doorway. I tried to break through, but he told me I wasn't going anywhere. I ran to the sliding glass door that was on the other side of the bed and started banging and screaming for help. I was in a panic, just begging for someone to hear me. He then looks me in the eyes and in the creepiest voice, then says, Here, let me help you. And he starts banging on the sliding glass door, screaming help and laughing. I then jump onto the bed and climb under the covers, putting a pillow over my head. Don't ask me why, but in that moment, I felt it was the only way to hide in a sense, just to get away from his evil eyes looking at me. He would keep talking to me, but I wouldn't answer him. Amber! 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 It was like I was in some kind of horror movie. I eventually looked out from the pillow and tried to jump up and leave, but he had pinned me down to the bedroom floor, and I eventually just gave in, and I told him what he wanted to hear. I told him he was right, and I hated myself for hurting him, and I was never going to do anything without him again, but that he had to let me call my friend Jessica to tell her I was alright, otherwise she was going to call my mom, and she'd be over here. He let me keep some distance in between us so that I could make a phone call, and I called 911. Please help, I'm being held captive by this guy I'm dating, and I shouted out the address. William then immediately ran out of his house, then jumped in his car and took off. I ran to a neighbor's yard, and waited for the cops to get there. They immediately put out a warrant for his arrest. Fast forward to when he got out of jail. I was eventually talking to someone new at this point, and I was for sure done with this creep. I eventually testified and he got off with major fines and lots of anger management classes. I was driving down the road when I had heard this hissing noise. At first, I thought it was my tire going flat by the sounds of it but I had felt something touch my arm that was resting on the middle console. And I looked back, and it was a fucking possum. Yes, you heard me right. This sick fucking bastard trapped me and put a fucking possum in my car. He knew how afraid of rodents I am. I literally talked about it all the time. I pulled into the restaurant that was on my right and opened up all the doors to my car. I went as far away from it as I could and waited a while while talking to the guy I was seeing on the phone. He had a son with him, and he couldn't come to me at the time. And so I eventually got some guts and went to look in the car. And luckily, I didn't see anything in the car anymore. I didn't call the police because what proof did I actually have? And how crazy would I have sounded? But I knew it was him. A few weeks later, my mom had sent me a screenshot of a picture of my ex. And sitting next to him was a girl. But the weird thing about this girl was she looked exactly like me. And when I say exactly like me, I mean head to toe. She had blonde hair, blue eyes, round shaped face, curvy body, everything. So much so that my dad was convinced that he had photoshopped it. But no, this girl was real. He not only is stalking me, but is using some poor girl just because she looks like me. Fast forward a month later when I'm at work and I notice my tire is completely flat. 
there was a screw completely lodged in it. Now, for some reason, it didn't really click that this had anything to do with him. I just thought I got unlucky and ran over one. Well, after having my stepdad patch it up, I got home and I woke up the next morning and my new boyfriend at the time and I noticed hundreds of screws dumped all throughout my driveway and now two other tires were flat as well. It was then that I knew it was him. I downloaded a phone recorder and I was dead set on getting this creep to admit it and calling the cops. I called him privately because he didn't have my new number. He answered and I had asked him if he wanted to come over. Really? You actually want to see me? I told him yes. I want him to come over and watch this video of him dumping screws in my driveway. He then sighs and says, Please, Ember, I don't want to go to jail. I immediately hung up and called the police the next day and filed for an immediate PPO. The judge ruled that I could have it for a year. Over the years, he would message me on fake pages, as well as message my fiancé and now husband. Luckily, I haven't heard from him in over a year now, but I heard he's dating someone with the same last name as me which is kind of weird. It really makes me wonder now whenever I think back to his late wife and I really wonder what the hell happened to her. Did he kill her and could that have happened to me? I guess I'll never know, but to my crazy psycho ex, I have no intentions of ever talking to you or seeing you ever again. I'm not saying my name or my ex-boyfriend's name. I'm a female in a small town in Ohio, and I had first met my boyfriend on Xbox. We messed around for a few months, and then we started dating. It was a great relationship. That is, until I later got to experience what he was truly like. He was so rude and toxic to me. I tried and tried to leave him because he would say such hateful things to me. He would always call me stupid and really ridicule and downgrade me. He made me feel so shitty about myself. I would often cry because of how he made me feel, and I actually tried leaving him, but he actually threatened suicide if I left him. I tried to help him out because he would make me feel so bad, and he would often call me toxic when he was the one manipulating me. However, I just ended up staying with him, which I know was really dumb. After some time, we finally met in person at a mall in his area, which was about three to four hours away from me. He made me spend my own money on him on stuff like food and clothes. We walked around the mall and he actually pushed me into a wall. It hurt like hell and people were actually watching this too. He then whispered into my ear in a deep voice, Do as I say. Instantly, my heart dropped to my stomach and my fight or flight response kicked in and I pushed him away with all of my strength. He freaked out and he had started apologizing to me. But I just kept walking away because he really freaked me out at this point. He grabbed me by the arm and kept pulling me. He was a lot stronger than me and he had dragged me around like a rag doll. He had dragged me to the unisex bathroom where he tried to get me to go down on him. And I told him he was crazy and to leave me alone and that we're over. I pushed him again as he had then cornered me in a huge stall. I managed to run like hell to my car and instantly lock the doors and drive away. He kept calling me repeatedly and spamming me messages. When I finally stopped for gas, I blocked him immediately, but I saved the messages. The first message said, Please baby, I'm sorry. Don't hate me. I just want to have some fun together. And he also sent more after that. I really hate that I never called the police about it. So yeah, be safe out there. And try and be careful of who you date. You honestly really just never know who your significant other might just turn out to be. So watch your back. I'm a female, and I was 17 years old at the time this story took place. Around 5 foot 2, and weighing at about 110 pounds. But I was fairly toned, so I can definitely hold myself in most situations. I was at my sister's apartment which was conveniently located right across the road from my own apartment. A little bit of background so you can understand how quickly some of these events played out. We lived in the projects, which were two-story apartments for low-income families. My mom was visiting my dad in the next town over, so I was often left there alone for days on end. Now on to the story. For privacy's sake, 
will call myself Anne, my sister Violet, and my ex Sebastian. It was New Year's Eve of 2009, and my sister was throwing a party for all of our friends. And of course, there was a lot of alcohol and pizza. It was around 7.30pm when it started. People were going in and out, music blaring, lots of chatter and such. I was pretty damn tipsy by 9.15pm. I was sitting on the couch with a friend of mine who we'll call Ren. He's a little emo kid, who I even met through my ex, and he was honestly a really cool kid. He sat down on the couch with me, and we started chatting. My boyfriend was just rotating in different circles, standing around, and just wouldn't spend time with me whenever I tried to join. Ren and I were pretty tipsy, borderline drunk at this point, and we were talking about being depressed and bleak things, like all teenagers really love to do. He and I started laughing about something, when Sebastian then comes over with a really angry look on his face, and asked what was so funny. Ren explains the joke, completely unaware that Sebastian was even mad. Sebastian just gives Ren a really annoyed expression after he explained the joke, and then he walked away. Ren then catches on that something was wrong, and he asked me about it. I explained he was just being jealous because I was having fun without him, even though he was the one avoiding me. Ren then apologized for getting me in trouble. I explained it wasn't him, and did not worry about it. Now, this wasn't the first time Sebastian showed his jealousy in really stupid situations. This was one of hundreds. So Ren then says, Mind if I ask you a question? Why do you put up with it? I merely shrugged, not really wanting to go into detail about it. But after thinking about it, I then got really angry and then said, You know what? It's really not fair. He gets to go out and have all this fun and I'm sure he does this with other girls. But why can't I? I mean, I'm just sitting here chatting with you, not fucking you, for Christ's sake. So what's wrong with this? We got into the topic of how unhappy I was, and I was really overtelling, like anyone who drinks too much typically does, when Sebastian then came up from behind me without me knowing, and Rin just watched in horror before I realized anything, as I continued blabbing on about how Sebastian doesn't care about me. And when I then turned around, my stomach dropped. Sebastian was hovering over me with his fist balled as he grinded his teeth, eyes wide and staring right into my soul. Come on! Sebastian shouted sternly as he jerked his head towards the door. He then proceeded to throw his beer bottle down on the tile as the glass exploded. It's time to go home! This is when everyone at the party then began to notice what was going on. So I rose from the couch, but I was going to down the last bit of drink that I had in my cup, when he then smacked it out of my hand, spilling it all over me. As I gasped, Sebastian turns around and glares at those who are watching, and then says, What? Is this entertaining for you? And then he turns back to me, then yelling, I said let's go. I immediately rushed to the door without looking back. Once Sebastian and I were at the apartment across the road, he asked me what the fuck that was back there. I told him I was just talking to Ren, and he accused me of flirting, and why Ren? Demanding to know why I wouldn't get up when Ren sat down next to me. Not really having a better answer than just I don't know, he got really pissed off, even more than he already was. The last time I cried and said I didn't know, he shoved me to the couch and then screamed at me. I said, why? So when he did this, I balled up, afraid he was going to hit me, and I told him that he promised he wouldn't do this. Drink too much, he then clenched his teeth and smacked his forehead against mine, demanding to know what over and over. I shifted away from him and then shouted he was being an asshole and really angry, and he followed up with, You're damn right I'm angry. He demanded I get up, and he asked why the hell I was flirting with his friend. I kept telling him I wasn't, and he shouted for me to shut up. I tried to beg him to listen to me when he screamed it, this time screaming so hard he made himself hoarse. I then started crying because one, he was angry as fuck, two, he wasn't listening 
and kept tyrannizing me because he misinterpreted it all and still wouldn't let me answer. And three, I was getting really afraid he might do something to me. It was already 10.45 p.m. now at this point, and without another word, he turns and walks out the door, slamming it behind him as it shook in its frame. I then got a text from my sister Violet, asking why Sebastian was crying. I explained that it was because I was talking to Ren. Not even 10 minutes go by before my phone buzzed again, and it was Violet, then saying, and he's coming back. As soon as I read the text, the front door swung open, then creating a hole in the wall behind it. I frowned and told him to stop it, and asked why he was here. Fury sparked in his eyes, and then began spitting. What, so you don't want me here? So you can invite Ren over to fuck? I really tried to de-escalate the situation several times when he started literally screaming himself hoarse again. When I then finally bellowed, Just stop already! He proceeded to bare his teeth at me as his face twisted up, kicking the table he was next to when I screamed for him to stop again. When I did, he then punched the little table, cracking it in the center, rendering it useless now. Stop! That's not even yours! I yelled. Well, you know what? I don't give a fuck! He screamed back. When I finally had enough, I screamed gutturally. Get the hell out! He then screamed no at the top of his lungs, then blasting his fist into a large picture that was hanging on the wall. Glass exploded everywhere as his hands started pouring blood. I certainly thought that was the end of it, but I was very wrong. His face twisted into a rage, and he began punching himself in the temple, with glass shards still on his knuckles, causing cuts to his head now. I got really afraid at this point. I didn't even know what to do or say. Way too scared to say anything, or even move. So I allowed him to continue beating his head. Finally, the energy left his eyes after all that punching, and him screaming the whole time. During this process... He had also broken my mother's lamp and candles. The table was worse off, and there was blood splattered all over the place. When he started crying, and it was clear all the fury was gone, I offered calmly to clean his hand and temple up. It took me a while, but I got some tweezers, and I then removed all the glass from his hand and head, then bandaged him. Why did I do this after what he did, you might ask? I don't even know. I guess I was just stupid back then. He went back to the party after that, and I cleaned up his mess the best that I could, deep in depression now, as the exhaustion caught up to me. Now, what really makes me angrier about this entire thing was the fact that my own mother and sister sided with him. She actually had the audacity to say, Honey, he needs you. He's really having some trouble with himself right now, and he needs you to understand him. There's no one better than you. Then Violet chimed in. Yeah, he was pretty pathetic last night. He did a lot of crying when he came back. Both times. Additionally, years later, I came to find out that he ended up being diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. I also learned from my therapist that my parents, especially my mother, had been grooming me since early childhood to just deal with these things like they're just supposed to be okay that they were usually my fault, and I need to submit to my man. Yes, she actually did tell me this at one point, as she indicated it's in the Bible that a wife must submit to her husband and his needs. I've been away from him for a long time now, and I have a really amazing guy in my life with a house and a kid. It's going on 11 years now, and he's nothing like Sebastian. I've also been learning over the years with not only the help of my therapist, but also my husband, that I don't need to be as my mother told me and taught me all those years. I talk to my mom as little as possible, and I rarely ever let her babysit our son, because I don't want her to groom him like she did me. I'm going to be using aliases for privacy reasons but the events in this story are true. My name is Cindy, and this happened in 2009. I met my ex Kevin during my junior year of high school, and we dated for ten and a half years. 
After our first six years, things started getting a little weird. Like he started telling me things such as, I prefer the term sociopath, and who would date a monster like me? I really should have seen those as red flags, and also the belittling comments regarding my various health conditions, especially my anxiety and depression. He would yell at me when I got silent because of an anxiety attack, or whenever I became depressed for a bit, and would tell me, snap out of it, please don't do this right now. God, you're just like a fucking little kid now. Shit, this is why you have anxiety, and whatever else the fuck you have. Then our 10 years roll around, and we start to hang out with some friends of ours like we usually do. We saw someone new in our group, and it was a mutual friend of someone in our group. We'll call her Jill. Well, Jill introduced herself, and she then started talking to my ex. I didn't mind it though. My ex was naturally friendly and really outgoing. But when Jill started telling my ex some really personal stuff about her home life, that really should have raised more red flags, because they literally just met that night. I remember a few years ago that my ex had mentioned to me that I think people just feel safe telling me their secrets, babe. I kept the thoughts to myself until we went back to my house later that night. Over the next week or so, I saw him hiding his phone and being more suspicious around me. I asked him what he was doing, and he just said, Nothing, babe. Don't worry about it. I heard his phone buzzing while I was taking a nap, thinking an alarm was going off. So I clicked it, and I opened his phone. I saw that there was a text from Jill, who was the mutual friend we met in our friend group. He was sending her inappropriate texts, and she was sending him inappropriate pictures. Most of the messages consisted of, I love you, and I'm going to leave her once I fix her attitude, I promise. I've wanted to leave her since our nine years. And then her message, Really, Kevin? Yeah, baby. You get me way more than Cindy ever did. And I promise we'll be together once I leave her, with a kiss emoji. Reading those really broke my heart. Now fast forward to 2020, right around COVID. I'm living with family away from Kevin, as well as any of the friends he introduced me to, because I realized that whole group was just really toxic and just no good for me. Later on in September 2020, I met my current boyfriend Tony, who's still helping me heal from the trauma that Kevin put me through with all his toxic behavior. So thanks Kevin, for putting me through hell for ten and a half years and making me feel scared every time I have an anxiety attack, or whenever I get depressed, thinking you'll yell at me, pinning me to the wall trying to protect me so I don't run away, or bruising me because you're holding me too tight. You really did have a personality like Ted Bundy, but I now have my dark knight in bad armor, thanks to Tony, who will always be there like a real boyfriend should, no matter what, despite all my mental health issues and other conditions. If I can leave the listeners with one piece of advice, let it be this. You can be with someone who you can think is the love of your life for so long, but never really know who they are until much later in the relationship. You can and will find happiness with someone else who never hurts you in any way, physically, emotionally, or even verbally. No one should ever have to suffer from an abusive relationship, and I'm really glad I got out when I did so I could find someone who could help me heal and make me much happier. And I really am. I'm a female, and this happened when I was 18 in year 2000. I live in a big city. I was in my senior year of high school when it happened. Being so young, I didn't have enough to stay safe and I fell for a lot of lies that I shouldn't have. I met this 20 year old boy who became my boyfriend because he was friends with some of the guys I was friends with. We'll call him Joe. At first, Joe really wasn't my type, but he had really won me over with humor, sweet gestures, and compliments. And for the first three months, the relationship had no issues. He had been really nice, and I later realized that it was just all to gain my trust. Joe started smoking pot, which kind of bothered me a little bit, and I told him I didn't like it, 
He told me he was going to quit, and he asked me to help him quit. I never asked him to, but he offered. One day I was meeting up with him and some friends, only to find out from them that he was trashing me, saying that he had to sneak around because I was forcing him to quit, and that I was being a bitch. I just ignored it because I thought at the time that he was trying to save face or something. I didn't know. I would go to a club 18 plus almost every weekend, but Joe said he didn't like the club and he didn't want me going there anymore. And he refused to go with me and he later guilted me into no longer doing something that I liked. Joe's mother owned a whole apartment building and he asked me to move in with him to his mother's house. I was hesitant but I said yes, and that's when things got worse. Joe never quit smoking pot. He quit his job, and he didn't find a new one. Then he would scream and whine at me or his mother to give him $50 for pot. He would literally scream and have a tantrum like a child for hours straight. Sometimes me and his mom gave in, because it was really torture having to listen to him. He started doing weird things like calling phone sex hotlines and then saying he didn't. One time when we were going to fool around and I got in lingerie, he then left to use the bathroom. And 30 minutes later, I go looking for him and I knock on the door and he's making noises before then opening it. And I saw that he had the phone and he was trying to hide it. I then asked him if he ditched me to call the phone sex lines and he said no. So I hit redial and it was indeed phone sex, and he then tried to lie, saying it wasn't him. He told me his mom was doing it to try and break us up because she didn't like me. I would find porn vids in his room that he would tell me his mother was planting, and I actually started to believe him because the pornos were granny porn, but he very clearly had some weird fetishes going on that I didn't know about. It wasn't just the porn and the ditching me for phone sex or the money, even though that was bad enough. He was also controlling. He said that I dressed too slutty and that I was very clearly trying to get men's attention. But the thing is, I didn't dress any different from when we met. He would also get really mad at me if a man looked at me, saying I wanted them, and he would accuse me of checking them out. He told me that he wanted me to wear his clothes so the men would stop catcalling me. I did put on baggy sweatpants and a men's hoodie. I remember this one time when I was holding his hand walking down the street, and some guy cat called me still. He was so angry at me that he shoved me back in the house. The next time he demanded money from me, I told him no. He said that I needed to give him money and kept yelling at me. His mother walked in because he was being so loud. I still told him no and that I was really sick of giving him my money, and he then started slamming my head right into the air conditioner. I then shoved him and stumbled back, and I ran past him. His awful mother just did nothing but then say to me, How dare you hit my son, you bitch! I told him we were through, and that I was so damn happy to be done with this crazy ass. But I wasn't. I decided to go back to clubbing because I liked it. The second night back, some guy I didn't know told me that he was friends with Joe, and that Joe had apparently asked him to hang my computer and to spy on me or destroy it with a virus. He also said then he was outside the club with my picture, telling men who went inside the club to stay away from me because I have STDs. This is when Joe found out that his friend wasn't going to actually hack my computer or put a virus on it, and that no one actually believed him about the STD thing. Joe decided he would come back into the club and then attack me by pushing and screaming at me. Now, everyone knew me at this club, and the bouncer came in, and Joe actually tried to fight the bouncer. The bouncer actually found a knife on him, and he forced him outside. After he was kicked out, everyone was just asking if I was okay. I didn't see him again after that, because he apparently got arrested that night. I found out from a mutual friend that about a week later, he ended up going to jail because he was in a park, and that he apparently got into an argument with two teenagers, and he then picked up his skateboard and he bashed them in the head so hard until they were unconscious. One of them so badly, the guy almost died. I later found the news article about it, and that he was apparently going to jail for 12 years. Once Joe got out of jail, he had tried to contact me on Facebook with a really long message, saying that his mother died, 
and that he now owned the apartment building. He also wanted me to come live with them. I was actually married with kids at the time at this point. He said that my kids could live there too. I mean, come on, as if I was going to leave my husband for him. I told him that he was delusional and that I'm married now, and that even if I wasn't, I would never be with him again, and I blocked him. One of my mutual friends told me that two years after that, that he ended up dying of a drug overdose, and that he lost his mother's apartment, and he had been banging prostitutes, and actually got one pregnant. I think I got out of that psychopath's way at the right time. To start this out, I'm a 17-year-old female, and the story takes place to when I was 15 to when I was almost 17. So the story will be about me first and the only boyfriend that I've ever had. Writing this story is a form of therapy for me, as I've never sat down and explained everything he did to me. So to start out, I'd been going to this church with my parents since I was four. Well, this boy came to my church with one of his friends when we were in fifth grade, and not too long after, the three of us soon became friends. For privacy reasons, we'll refer to my ex as Dean, and our mutual friend as Sam. Me and Dean really liked each other for a while, and we had started dating on my 15th birthday. We were awkward kids, and we only hung out at church or youth events. We finally had our very first date in February, right before the pandemic. After my 16th birthday, something finally clicked, and we became inseparable. We got into a routine of hanging out after he got out of school one or two days a week, and we hung out at my house every Sunday after church. I was in love with this boy, but then after he got out of school for the summer of May 2021, it all went downhill. Dean was obsessed with me, and not in a good way. He had Life360 on me, but so did all my friends, so I never really thought anything of it until he got to the point where he was really creepy about it. He also texted me constantly and would blow up my phone till I answered. One time in particular, three of my friends had surprised me and they took me to our local mall for the day to go shopping because they knew I needed a girl's day. Dean, of course, wasn't happy I was going out without him because he thought I would get hurt or kidnapped without him. He wanted me to text him when I entered the store and in the mall and when I left. I wanted to enjoy the day, so I didn't tell him when we moved stores. He blew up my phone, but I just ignored it. It got embarrassing when he had called and texted the friends I was with, frantically wanting to know if I was okay. After we shopped, we went to eat and Dean had begged me to call him. I told him no, and that it was really rude because I was with my friends, and that the four of us hadn't been able to hang out in a while which of course upset him. When they dropped me back off in my house, me and Dean had planned to FaceTime so I could show him what I bought. Instead, as soon as I FaceTimed him, he gave me a serious talk about how worried he was about me, and then he screamed and cried and punched things all day because he was so worried about me and also how my friend should have really asked him before taking me anywhere. I just kept trying to reassure him, but at the same time not laugh about it. I mean, come on, screaming and crying? It was the four of us together, and I have martial arts training as well. I mean, I know things can happen, but I'm not stupid. My own dad is super overprotective of me, with me being an only child, and even he has never acted like that. There was also another instance that really pissed me off, and really showed me just how unhinged he was. In July of 2021, a family friend from out of state came to visit. She came down for a weekend, and her and my family went horseback riding. I had 15 plus texts from Dean, wondering if I was okay. On the ride back, I told him I was fine, and then I fell asleep in the car. When I later woke up, he had again sent me multiple texts, asking what happened. He asked what we were going to do later that evening, and I told him we were going to get in our pool and go swimming. And surprise, surprise, he had begged to come over and meet the family friend. He was driving me insane about it, and I called him when I got home. I told him it wasn't a good time, and he had then started crying on the phone, and he was actually punching trees in his backyard, telling me that his friend sucked, 
and that I was his only real friend he had. He made me feel like I had to be glued to my phone. There were so many instances where I would lay my phone down for an hour, and I would always come back to 15 or more texts saying things like, Baby? Hey, I love you. Are you mad at me? And it drove me insane. He started getting really scary though near the end of the summer. Now, I was really fine on kissing him and making out every once in a while, but he began to get forceful. He would grab me and kiss me even when I would say no, and he would grab my ass and boobs in front of my friends. He would pin me down on my bed and kiss me even though I would tell him to get off repeatedly. He would also stick his hand in my pants even after I would tell him no and move his hand, and then he would start crying and saying he was sorry like he was the victim. Once he begged me to give him a hand job, and when I said no, he called me a fucking asshole. He really kept me on edge, and he made me feel like I had to have my phone on me constantly, and he dragged me down so terribly. In August of last year, I finally broke up with him over the phone, and he took it horribly. He was crying and screaming, but I had lost all sympathy at this point. He also called all of my friends to tell them we broke up. Why on earth would you feel the need to call them first? When I was talking to one of my coworkers and boss about him, one of them suggested turning my location off on Life360 to get a break until I broke up with him. What really concerned me the most was within about 30 minutes of me turning it off, he then texted me asking me why I paused it, and he asked me to turn it on multiple times a day before I ended things. The day after I broke up with him, I met up with two friends at a local diner in our small town, and Dean showed up, and he got breakfast in the drive through Now, he literally hates that place, and he's never once gotten breakfast there. I still have no idea how he knew I was there, because my location was still off, and he had left the Life360 circle right after I dumped him. I had also parked my car way in the back, away from view, because my car is very noticeable. It makes me a target. He was really starting to scare me and freak me out at this point. I was really starting to worry that he was going to rape or assault me at some point if I continued to let this go on any longer. He honestly just made no sense, and he acted like a child. He actually hated one of my friends simply because she was allowed to spend the night and he couldn't. He would always get depressed and he always wanted to talk whenever she was over. I think I used to believe it at first, but I then realized he just wanted my attention. He also openly admitted that he had a porn addiction when he was 8 years old because of his dad's death depressing him so much. Look, I'm not an evil person. I know that losing someone you're close with like that is really traumatic and everyone deals with it in a different way. But I'm sorry. I feel like him saying his dad's death made him watch porn was just really weird to me. Now, moving on to after we broke up. He called his brothers and he had lied about things that I never even did and I felt like he was always going everywhere I did. I even caught one of his friends taking a photo of me. He always stares at me all throughout church, and it makes me so uncomfortable. A few Sundays ago, I realized he was wearing the scrunchie I gave him, and he's always wearing the vans I bought him, as well as the phone case I painted for him. It feels like he's everywhere, and I can't escape him. What really makes all of this so much worse is just how much of a hypocrite he is. He always stands up and makes a scene at church, what I know how he really is. Our mutual friend Sam that I'd mentioned earlier actually turned on me and was now only siding with Dean. Dean's mom would always call Sam her second son all over Facebook, even though Dean would talk crap about him all the time. The hypocrisy I see from them bothers me so much that I'm actually changing churches after I walk the stage with them on Sunday. Well, the Halloween right after we broke up, Sam had messaged me, asking for my side of the story. When I explained everything that happened, here was his reply. I want to start off by saying that I'm not picking any sides on this, and I want this to stay between us. He told me about what y'all did alone together, and that he used to watch porn. He also told me that he deeply regrets doing those things, and he wishes that he never did them. He knows he did some things wrong. He admitted that. And about letting you go places... He told me that he just wanted to make sure that you were okay and that you were having fun, that he wasn't trying to be controlling. He cared about you. He wanted to make sure you weren't going places you shouldn't be going. 
Another topic, when you said that he would get upset whenever you didn't respond. He told me that he would have nights where he would feel really lonely and think about his dad or something, and he just wanted to talk to you, but you decided to just put your phone away and ignore him. And about his dad, he told me about how when his dad died when he was young, and that he was so depressed for such a long time, and it caused him to have a porn addiction, and he couldn't sleep for so many nights, and that whenever he told you about it, you laughed at him, or at least snickered. He was seven or eight years old and losing his will to live, and you laughed at him about that. Once again, I'm not picking sides. I'm just telling you his side of the story. After he texted me that, I was totally dumbfounded. He very obviously picked sides, and I now have nothing to do with him anymore. Now, I know this wasn't the absolute scariest story out there, but it really goes to show you how anyone, no matter how good they are, or if they go to church, can actually be the literal scum of the earth, or be a complete weirdo. Having a guy care about you and wanting you to be safe is a good thing, but this guy took it to the next level, and he really scared me by how much he was obsessed with me. I've heard from different people that he plans to go to the military, and I really hope that happens so he'll be gone from my life and won't act like a little baby anymore. He was always used to getting anything he wanted at 17 years old, and for him to go to the military and be yelled at 24-7 would really be amazing to me. Stay safe out there, everyone, and don't let relationships like mine drag on. If they make you depressed and always glued to your phone and always on the edge like they'll kill themselves, they probably aren't the one. My name is Denise. I just turned 37 a few weeks ago, and this happened about 10 years ago. I had started dating this guy, who for privacy reasons, we'll call him Tony. I had met him through a mutual friend on Facebook. He started messaging me, and we seemed to click right away. He seemed to be everything I wanted in a man. He was tall, handsome, well-mannered, and he treated me like a queen. We dated with no problems for about seven months, but then things started to change. If I wanted to hang out with my friends, he would tell me I should ask him first because he might have something planned for us. Or if I would go out to dinner with my mother, he would think I'm with another guy and he would call me some names I'd rather not repeat. If I wore something he didn't like, he would tell me to change and he would call me constantly. And if I wouldn't answer, he would just show up at my house and think I'm messing around on him. He was becoming so controlling. Sadly, I had put up with this for another four months until we went to a concert at the House of Blues. He went to the bar to get a drink and this guy came up to me and started talking to me. I told him I'm with my boyfriend and the guy started to walk away and then slap my butt. Tony saw this and he started yelling at me in front of everyone and he said to me, Oh, so that's the guy you're cheating on me with. I told him I wasn't cheating and I don't even know that guy. He then grabbed my arm and dragged me outside. He hit me so hard that it caused my nose and lip to bleed and I had a bruise on my face and arm for weeks. Since I had drove us there, I ran all the way to my car and then left. He called me as I was driving home and he told me how sorry he was that he accused me of cheating and for hitting me. I told him to screw off and that we're so over and I hung up. I ignored him for two weeks and he then started showing up to where I worked and causing a scene and eventually he'd caused me to get fired. I had found another job with my friend and he found out where I was working and started sending creepy notes to me and he had also sent me 11 roses with a black rose in the middle. It creeped me out and I was really scared to be alone and so my friend said I could stay at her place for a while. The next few days, he would call me and he would leave me long voicemails, saying he's at a bar getting drunk and how he's thinking about driving his motorcycle off a bridge or drinking rat poison. I texted him and told him that I didn't care what he did. I eventually went back to my house and I caught him trying to break in a few times. I called the cops and all they told me was I can get a restraining order which is a complete joke. The final time I saw him is when he broke in in the middle of the night. I got out of my bed because I heard a noise and he grabbed me. He then slammed me up against a wall 
then sad. If you scream, I swear I'll cut out your tongue. I was so scared and he had tied my hands behind my back. He told me he was going to kill me so slowly so that I can feel all the pain that I've caused him since we broke up. He then said, If I can't have you, nobody's going to. He left the room and I managed to get my cell phone from the bedside table and I dialed 911 with my nose. I told them my ex was trying to kill me and gave them my address. He came back in and then smashed my phone. The cops were there in a matter of minutes and then arrested him, but not before he stabbed me in the shoulder and leg. Apparently I had passed out from losing so much blood and I later woke up in the hospital. The cops came by and I gave them a statement and had to go through all that bullshit. After all the legal crap was over, I moved to a different city and I still have nightmares about that night, but I am doing much better knowing that he's behind bars. I pray that whenever he gets out, I never see him again. To start this little adventure, I'd like to say if you haven't been a part of an abusive relationship, you don't truly understand why that person stays. I was a senior in high school, and I had already been pretty good buddies with Jay for a couple of years. We enjoyed everything together. We graduated high school together. He was sweet, and he really made me feel like I was the love of his life. But once we got our apartment, and he wasn't around his mother, he changed. For months, I was physically and mentally abused. I didn't know how to leave, and all of the self-assurance I built up was gone, depleted due to his mind games and physical torture. Not every day being with an abuser is bad if you know to keep them happy and also make it seem like you're happy to be with them. The first time we broke up was when I finally had enough of his abuse. I had messaged my friend D letting her know of all the abuse and that I needed help getting out. I had a tattoo appointment planned for the next day. Jay decided he wanted to join. While getting a tattoo, he grabbed my phone. He stormed out and all of us were confused. Dee and I started talking about all the steps I would need to take in the next couple of weeks to get out and be rid of him for good since he left. Once when the appointment was done, Jay was very angry. I got into the car as well as D, and he then started to drive very crazy. He was crying, and he had started to hit the ceiling of the car. I asked him what was wrong, and he said that he knew. He knew I was planning on leaving him. I felt like all the color in my face then left, because he then started to laugh like a madman, and he proceeded to tell me he was going to drive off a bridge with me in the car. I had to think quickly, because a bridge was coming right around the corner. I told him if he fixes the way he treats me, I'll stay, but he then threatened death on me and how D wasn't going to keep me. I then told him this car is his only transportation, and he then slowed down and asked if I would stay with them. I said yes. Once we got to D's place, I jumped out of the car, and before going into her house, I told him I was done with him, and that I will never be a victim of his abuse again. But he played the best mind games with my church and my other multiple friends. So now I look like the jerk for not taking him back. I did eventually go back to him and we had stayed together for three more years. He was still abusing me and causing me bruises. I lost all respect for myself in those three years because I took that monster back. I allowed him to hit me, choke me, and make me feel worthless. I had very dark moments in that period where all I wanted to do was die because I had no support from family to help me. After all, they had abandoned me because of Jay, and he would use that to his advantage. At the end of the three-year mark, he broke things off with me. My brain was very scattered. I didn't know what to think. I just cried for days. And finally, I was able to understand why I was crying. It's because I was free from his abuse. I knew I wouldn't go back to him. He even tried to beg for me to come back and I told him I would never go back to him in a million years. I thought that I had deleted him from everything I had him on, but somehow he knew when I was going on dates or whenever I was happy. I did go to therapy because my brain was very messed up. I did eventually get married to the most caring and amazing man who had truly helped me with my fears. I did find out that after ending things with Jay, 
that a mutual friend of ours was keeping tabs on me to let him know what I was doing, and they decided to date for a while. She ended things with him because he started to do the same things to her that he was doing to me. She apologized to me for causing unnecessary issues by telling him what I was doing. I ended contact with her as well, since she in my mind was an absolute snake and knew what Jay was like, but she didn't believe me until he started doing it to her as well. So yeah, fuck her too. I wasn't that experienced with relationships in 7th grade. I didn't really know that much about girls. Then one day at lunch, this girl named Madison who had sat at my table whispered into my ears, I like you. And that's basically how I met and started dating my first ever girlfriend. So strange at a young age, that's all it takes. I knew Addison from our class and our little friends group, but in no way did I know her well. She was a pretty good looking girl, dirty blonde with brown eyes. We really didn't do much besides hang out in our neighborhood and school. However, I started noticing Addison literally everywhere I went. Whether it was the community pool with my guy friends or the grocery store down the street with my family, she wouldn't really approach me. It was in a very stalker kind of way. Whenever I would ask her about it the day after or at school, she would say it was a coincidence. Well, this just got worse and worse until one of her friends, Christine, literally told me at school one day that Addison was out my house late at night. When I confronted her all about this, she denied everything and she told me I'm crazy and that I'm seeing her everywhere because I'm madly in love with her. I had never broken up with someone before and I guess I was a pretty unconfident guy at the time to begin with. So I ignored all this weird stuff and kept Addison close to me. The next major red flag was her telling to meet me up at the park one night close to our neighborhood. We have a small lake in the park and she told me she's there. I make my way there and I ask her why the fuck we're meeting at night at a weird place. She was acting really strange and a little hostile, telling me we should jump in the water and drown together. I was seriously afraid of what she was saying. I was just about to leave when she then grabbed onto me and wasn't letting go. We ended up rolling around in the grass and not in a cute way, more like a football tackle. I was getting weirded out and I then told her that maybe we should just be friends. This is when she went insane. She started stalking me really heavily all the way to my house in the morning and evenings, and any time I would look out my room's window, she would be staring up from the sidewalk. It was weird as fuck. I wanted to tell my family, but I was really scared, and I didn't want to tell my friends because I'm a guy. Then the last straw happened. This girl decides to follow me home from school one day during the summer, and then from right behind me, punches me to the ground then thrashing me with her backpack. Once I was completely out of it, she gets on top of me, then takes my hand and puts a bracelet on me that has her name and my name carved into it. She then takes out some sort of razor blade out of her bag and starts cutting her arm with it. I wasn't even sure what to do, but I knew right away that she was carving my name into her arm, and I didn't want to wait to find out if she wanted me to carve hers into mine. I ran all the way home and locked all of my doors, and I then threw out my shirt as there were squirts of blood on it, and I didn't want my parents finding out. Not related to this, but coincidentally, my family was moving two cities away later that summer. Rest assured, I threw out that bracelet, and for the rest of the summer, I avoided going outside for good. I blocked her on everything, and every night, I'd always make sure we locked the doors and closed our garage. I did see her in passing a handful of times again, but whenever I noticed her, I'd always make a run for my house. I swear there was a few times that I heard her following me or even running at me, but I got away, and once we moved, I never looked back nor saw her. So Addison, I definitely don't want to see you again, but I really, really hope you got help for whatever was going on with you, because you really need it.